we're going to be talking for about 15 minutes short presentation this evening and then we're going to leave some time to answer any questions that you might have um, at the end so um, yeah so the next few slides we're going to explain to you where we see assessment and actually what that means for inspection but first of all we just wanted to um, draw your attention to this slide and just wanted to sort of look we think it's really really important just to say thank you thank you on behalf of Ofsted and also just to say that recently Amanda Spielman our chief inspector has been at a couple of conferences and spoken um, publicly giving our thanks for all that you've done and you continue to do um, well over these challenging times we know how challenging this whole period has been and it continues to be and really recognizing that and we, we just wanted to make sure that we took opportunity today draw your attention to the fact that you know we wanted to pass on our thanks and the fact that our chief inspector has also done that and we'll also make some references to both her speeches as we go through the presentation yeah she's been talking recently about quite a bit of early years so we thought that'd be useful yeah. for you to hear um, but, but to particularly in this session, we're sort of talking about assessment and assessment in, in the reception classroom, and we want to uh, be quite specific about some of that thing. So the first thing I wanted to do was just remind you of some of the stuff that we've got in our um, approach to inspection now, and that's you know based very much on the quality of education that children receive, and really focusing on the curriculum and how that's delivering um, that quality of education. Um, for children and yeah we see the, the curriculum as that framework that sets out what you want children to know and when they're going to know it um, and it, we focus very much on that what what do you want children to learn now you know and that, how is that building what they've learned previously and what they're going to go on to and and we think that that's very useful particularly when we're thinking about our youngest children because it's so proactive because actually we can see that sort of planned purpose of what we're doing with children today and where that's going on to you know you can I think you can see it very clearly sometimes in things like a, like the phonics program you know if you've got a good phonics program it sets that out for you and you know where you're going equally if you've got um, you know clear expectations about how children's PSED is delivering is developing sorry you might have an idea about what you what really really focusing on at the moment and what you're going to go on to next that turns the curriculum into a progression model where you've actually got that work done for you beforehand and that has a huge impact on assessment because if you know what it is that you really want your children to be learning at the moment you don't necessarily need to do formal assessments around that it's very much about looking at them seeing what they're doing what they can do the children who need a bit of extra practice and support and then giving that to them sort of you know in the here and now it's very much about that idea of helping children to keep up rather than waiting and having to help them catch up afterwards. Um, you know, I've talked before about um, bicycles and having a sort of series of bicycles as being an example of a curriculum that's a progression model. But really the, the key advantage is by doing that thinking in advance, you can focus much more on actually how you want the children to get this thing. You know, this thing that you're doing in maths or in um, physical development that you know was tricky last year, and now how are we going to work that this year because once you've got that sort of focus if you like then what the the activities and the sessions that you're running with the children you really know what you want them to get out of it you really focus on those key nuggets you know this slide is always about sort of sifting for gold and the golden nuggets in in any sort of activity are what are the key things that we really need our children to get out of this particularly those children who struggle you know, particularly those children who we have more concern about, who perhaps haven't got the vocabulary of others, who didn't come into to reception with the same level of knowledge as other children. They're the ones we've really got to particularly focus. Um, and so when we're thinking about assessment, we can't think about it separately from the curriculum, because actually the curriculum is how we set out how and when we want children to learn things. And the assessment, we would argue, is actually about a lot of it is the sort of we're watching them, seeing them doing it, working with them, helping them to learn that and sort of that interactive, formative type approach. And 
I think something that's really, really important here when we're talking about assessment is um, a reminder about what it actually says in the EYFS, so the revised EYFS from September 2021. And again, Amanda recently spoke at the Nursery World Business Summit, and in this speech, she was um, really pleased um, to say that she likes the fact that there's more precision, precision in the early learning goals. She likes the fact that it makes it clear that those goals are an assessment point at the end of the EYFS. And the EYFS separates this from the curriculum, those educational programmes. And I think it's really important just to, to look at those words in bold on this slide and that actually it's for you as teachers to draw on your knowledge of the child and your own expert professional judgment in terms of forming that judgment about whether a child is at expected level of development or not. And it doesn't require sources of written or photographic evidence. It, Go. Sorry, do, I'm just no, I know, that's fine. Go. It's so important. And actually, we, we sneaked in a bit early and we came into a discussion and we we're really that, pleased yeah. to hear people talking about the fact that the early learning goals are simply, and this is what Amanda was saying, they're simply an assessment tool. They're a check. They are not the purpose of education in reception. You know, reception is so much more important than simply what's contained in the early learning goals. And we can see that so clearly just looking at maths. You know, the, there's no early learning goal for shape, space and measure. It doesn't mean that you're not going to teach your children a huge amount about shape, space and measure, does it? It just means there's not going to be that, um, that assessment there. You know, the curriculum, which is set out in the EYFS, in those areas of learning, in those educational programmes, is much bigger than those small assessment things and actually the you know that uh, those assessments at the end of the EY uh, the end of the reception year need to be put in the context of you know of being of less importance than actually that child's journey through the school you know reception isn't about getting children ready to do that EYFSP a reception is a really important stage in those children's education and it's as much about getting them ready for year one and year two and year six and year 10 as it is about anything else. It's part a really important part of their journey and it shouldn't be reduced to thinking it's simply about early learning goals. And I think Amanda went on to say, didn't she, that um, she wants, you know, she wants you all to know that as Ofsted inspectors, we're not looking for full files of assessment evidence on individual children. You don't need to take a photograph of a child with a group of five bricks, for example, to pro pro um, provide evidence that you've introduced children to the number five. If you as a teacher have been working with a child, you'll know whether or not that child can recognise five, count up to five, subitize, build a tower of five or not. Um, and, you know, that's because the photograph doesn't give um, teachers this information. You already know that. And it could give false assurances um, that that child understands something that is in fact beyond their knowledge. Um, and, you know, what we're not saying is, you know, don't take photos because, you know, potentially they're nice for parents, but actually don't do it because you think we want to see it. Don't produce it as evidence. We want you to use your professional knowledge. And then while we're here, I think it's really important that we talk a little bit about how we can use assessment in terms of um, making sure we reduce that chance of a child falling behind. And we know we can do that if we use assessment well. And the bullet points on this slide just illustrate some of those suggestions. We know children learn best from those high quality interactions with adults, so making sure um, they happen is really important, especially for those children, as Phil has already said, arrive in reception with less knowledge than others. It's really important. And there's a key message there about assessment. If you've got assessment regimes which require, you know, they're, they're adult heavy, you know, they, they require people to come away from actually direct work with children to observe children instead, you have to weigh that up, we think, because actually we know, like we said, you know, the children who can't do things um, need high quality interactions from an adult to help them learn how to do it. That's that's the only way they'll get it. Um, and if assessment activities are taking adults away from doing that, 
then you know there's a there's a, a decision to be made there mm. about what's the most important and then there's that argument there about that next bullet on this slide about knowing the children well. Well, if you're being drawn away to, you know, fill in lots of checklists and data returns and things, well, actually, you're missing out on those important interactions and knowing the children as well as you can to support them in um, the areas that they need the most help. Also really important, of course, is listening to parents when they express concerns about their child's development and also using those ongo ongoing daily obs observations of um, staff and plan checkpoints as well are also important. And of course, responding quickly to any concerns, that early identification is really important and any interventions are key in helping children to reach their potential and actually helping all children reach their potential. So being ambitious for all children and recognising as we've said before, that not all children benefit from those same advantages as others. And, you know, we need to be really determined that all children will do well. It's really helpful sometimes to think um, in reception that, the, that it's not that children can't do something, mm. it's that they haven't learned how to do it yet. And that's where the sort of responding quickly comes in. If we can see that a child's struggling to do something or struggles, you know, with a, a group of things, the more um, you can help, you can try and think of different ways of getting them to be able to learn how to do that thing. You, you increase the chances of them learning it in the first place, but also every time you try a different tack, you learn more about what it precisely is that they struggle with. And that precision is also going to help you if you do decide later on that you need to get some sort of, you know, expert in, expert advice, whether you're wanting to seek further, you know, professional advice about a child. The more you've tried with them, the more different ways you've had a go at getting them to learn it, the more information you've got for that professional, for example, a speech and language therapist, to work on. Whereas if you haven't tried all those things, the speech and language therapist is likely to come in and suggest that you try those things before they can actually identify something. So it's really worth having that sort of response. The other thing about, as Wendy said, about being ambitious is recognising that some, some of our children come in with a disadvantage. They're not as advantaged as others. And in reception, it's a really crucial place to really be focusing on some of those disadvantages, particularly around communication and language and areas of PSED. And the more that we can focus on those, the more likely we are to get those children to a place where later on they can access everything fully, become you know, confident readers and writers and all of those things. So many things that we can do at those early stages. Mm. But lastly, we just wanted to, to share, um, as we said at the beginning, some things from a couple of speeches that um, Amanda Spielman, our Chief Inspector, has made very recently. There was one at ASCO and also um, at a Nursery World event as well. And there we've summarised it on this slide um, by, you know, and this is a direct quote from Amanda, you don't really need to do anything extra on our account. You shouldn't be doing anything we would suggest for us, for Ofsted. Now, particularly when it comes to assessment, you know, we have been very clear that we won't look at internal assessment data and tracking information, you know, those things that um, schools are using for their own purposes to, you know, to monitor children's progress. Because as Wendy said earlier on, if there are things about photographs or tick mm. sheets or whatever, it doesn't actually tell us what children can do. It, it might be very useful for you. What we're much more interested in is having conversations with you about, about that child over there. What could they do when they arrive? What have you been working with them on? Where do you want them to get to next? What's your ambition for that child? You know, are, are they struggling with something? How are you helping them? All of those things. Um, and that's, that's about ambition. That's about the ambition and wanting the very very best for children and really focusing on where they are and what they need next you know it's why sometimes a focus on assessment criteria such as um in fsp can actually get in the way sometimes of you really providing children with what they need to do you know to get the best out of their mm. education and i think ultimately you know what's really important is that you do what you do because it's the right thing to do for your children and you know don't do anything um extra for us, because you think it's something that we might want to see. So, we've tried to be quite brief. Jill will know that we um, sometimes we struggle. struggle with that, don't we? But um, <laughs> that's that. So, we've now left a bit of space, hopefully, 
for if anyone's got any questions. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. That's great. That's really, really helpful. And yes, we've got a got a couple of questions here. Oh, I can see somebody just posted the caretaker is indeed jangling keys. Um, so I'll just mention to Debbie, we will post, we will email out the evaluation tomorrow. Um, Ellie will post a link shortly in the chat bar as well for anybody who, uh, who does have to leave, uh, but we'll also email it out tomorrow. Um, OK, so yeah, Phil, Wendy, are you happy to answer some questions? And if I scroll back up in the chat bar here, so first you've got, how are you expecting the curriculum to be shown or presented? Do you have some good examples? There are lots of conflicting examples on social media. We don't have any preference at all for how it's delivered or displayed. You know, that's not what we're interested in. What we want to do is be able to understand it. So we want to be able to see how the curriculum works by you describing it to us, talking it through with us. And what we're particularly interested in is how that works as a progression model and how what children are learning now fits in with what they're going to be learning next week or next month or next year. You know, and particularly when we're when we're um, looking at the curriculum in a primary school, we're interested in how what children are learning in reception is seen as part of the journey of that child as they travel through the school. It's not seen as something that happens separately from the rest of their learning, you know, before they then start whatever happens in year one. We're actually interested in how that forms part of the picture. We know that there have been sort of things about people thinking there should be curriculum maps and that those should look like something. That's that's not you know not what we're interested in. What we want to know is what is the curriculum here? What's it like? How's, how how ambitious is it? And uh, we would always encourage people to actually look at our handbook, which we publish and we deliberately publish it so that there is nothing hidden from people that we inspect. And that talks about what we'll look for. It look, talks about, it describes the way that we gather evidence and then the judgments that we'll make about that evidence. So we we try and be as um, transparent as possible around that. And and as you say that, Phil, I've just put into the chat bar, we've also got um, our myth busting page that we can't call, we don't call it, well, it is a myth busting page, but it um, where it answers some of those frequently asked questions and actually, curriculum maps is one of those questions in there. So um, yeah, would urge people to have a look at that as well. Fabulous, thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you for putting that link in the chat box as well, Wendy, that's brilliant. So you've already covered the next question that was on here from Rachel about are you looking to see progressive curriculums clearly leading to key stage one? So um, let me have a scroll down. I mean, just on that while you're scrolling, we were, I mean, reception isn't about year one in that sort of very, straightforward way you know yes we would want children's learning to continue relatively seamlessly as they leave reception and travel into year one but actually it's for a school to determine how that curriculum works and gives those children the very best chance of making learning and progress as they travel through the school so it's we wouldn't expect to see it sort of you know cut down into separate pieces we we're more interested in that sort of whole big journey brilliant thank you so we've got a question here saying, uh, are you recommending moving away from learning journals? So again, you know, we've got no, you know, preferred way of doing it. We would we would say what you, you know, do the right thing because it works for your children. It's the right thing. It works in your context and actually also thinking about staff workload and well-being. But, They're important. Yeah. And our, our thing is to do it for us. You know, yeah. we're not we're not going to be looking at them particularly. We're not going to be seeing, you know, those as evidence of progress that children have made. We're going to be much interested in having conversations with teachers and other adults and observing what's happening, seeing those children doing it. You know, mm. if you're telling us that they can do stuff, let's go and watch them. Let's see them. Let's see them demonstrating that learning. And I think that comment that's just come in from Sarah in the chat there, Jill, that she's Sarah's just put we've had a recent inspection and this was our very much our experience. Our curriculum was examined through discussion. We talked about ambition, program, progress and uh, links to previous and future learning. Brilliant, thank you. And thank you for posting that as well, Sarah. It's really great to hear that uh, that's what's happening out in, in the real world as well. So I've got a couple more here at the moment. So are conversations enough? Will Ofsted ask to see books? Um, well, we we like to see the impact of the curriculum. So we like to see what's been learned from the curriculum. 
Um, but on the whole, what we want, what children are learning in reception is is rarely most evident in books. You know, children, might be later up in the school. Yeah, I mean, if we if we were looking at history in Key Stage Two, we'll probably be looking in history books in you know, children in Year Four and Five to see the historical content because that's an that gives us some evidence of what they might have covered and learnt. In reception, we're much more likely to be watching children, to be observing them, to be listening to the conversations that they have with adults, to be seeing how adults interact with those children, to see the quality of those interactions and the extent to which those children's vocabulary and understanding is being developed. You know, we know, and it's, you know, it comes back to the to Wendy's comment about the photograph. A photograph of a child with five bricks doesn't tell you whether they know what five is. The only way you actually learn that as an adult, as a teacher working with them, is by having a conversation with them, isn't it? By playing with them, by working with them, with those things. So, and that's what we'll be interested in seeing. And we might even have some of those conversations with children, or we might be watching them, um, watching adults within the place doing that. So, so it's unlikely that we'll be really looking too much at, at, at books, you know, as as far as those books exist. I mean, obviously, what we are interested in is. You know, the, the phonic knowledge that they've got and listening to that and we'll uh, we always listen to older children in the school read so we can get some ideas of that but but no the books will be a key feature in reception thank you so another one that i've got in here is uh would you ask about percentage of children who are on track mid-year or groups of children who are not making progress or how free school meals are performing um it's unlikely that we'd be doing that. We're much more likely to say, um, um, talk to me about that child over there. Tell me about somebody who's struggling with something. How are you working with them? Um, you know, if often we'll go into a into a school and get told about children who arrive in that that setting with, for example, limited vocabulary or they don't have a, a you know a, a great knowledge of books. We're interested in that. Okay, so tell us what are you doing about that? How are how are things happening? How are you making sure that children learn to really enjoy a good story? How are you supporting them to develop the vocabulary that perhaps they haven't got? Um, and those are the key features. When we're thinking about reception, um, I mean, elsewhere when we're looking, say for example, when we're looking at reading, we'll consider the bottom 20% and we'll, you know, because those are often the children who don't come in with the advantages of others. They may have special needs, they may dis be disadvantaged, um, but actually that's the group who need um, you know, skillful help most. And that's of, often where we'll be looking at, but we wouldn't be asking those sort of questions about percentages and, you know, on track, not on track. What we're interested in is how well you know your children, not necessarily the numbers that are associated with it. Thank you. And it's great to see that Sarah's commented again in the chat box. So I didn't look at any of our books or written assessments. They got the information from the environment and through talking to children. So it's always great when uh, when all the messages dovetail in together, isn't it? So I've no more questions there at the moment, but if I can um, ask another one that came up a little bit earlier um, through one of the DFE quest, uh, sessions was around what Ofsted might be asking um, in regards to data and things that you would require from senior leadership teams and governors. I think that's a really important question, isn't it? And um, again, you know, the handbook makes it really clear in terms of we won't be looking at any internal assessment data on inspection. Yeah, I mean, what we're interested in, particularly when we talk to senior leaders, is we're, we'll be asking about how, um, you know, their own view of the quality of education in the school, their own view of how effectively they're the, the different areas for learning and subjects have got, you know, children making good progress in those things. And we will, to be honest, expect senior leaders to be able to talk knowledgeably about children's journey through the school from reception till the end. Um, not in, in the detail that we would expect if we were working with a subject leader or an EY leader, but we would expect them to have that overview. We would expect governors to have the same knowledge of learning in reception as they have of learning in year six. You know, it's, it's gonna be at an appropriate level. Mm. But we're, I suppose, when, particularly when we're interested, what we're interested in with senior leaders is that overview that they've got of how effectively they feel the curriculum is supporting children to make the most progress from the moment they arrive in the school until the moment they leave. And the importance of the fact that the curriculum starts as soon as the child enters, walks yeah. into that school. Yeah. Their journey starts from the beginning. Hello. Fabulous, thank you very much. That was uh, that's really, really useful. 
Um, I can hear somebody just shouted hello. I don't know if that's that somebody has got a question who can't type in the chat box. We've had a few technical hitches this evening, so I, thought, I don't want to give not give somebody the opportunity if that's what we're uh, if they can't type in the chat box. Um, Will, Phil, Wendy, thank you so much. That has been so helpful. Is there anything um, you want to add? Is there any last thoughts or comments or anything? I just think just, you know, don't don't do anything. Don't produce anything for us because you think it's something that we want to see. You know, we're interested in finding out what it's like to be a child, a pupil in in your school and um, yeah, have the confidence to do what you do every day. Don't do anything different just because the inspector calls. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And that's just such a, a great message to end on as well, isn't it? You know, about doing it for the children, uh, not to evidence something to Ofsted. So thank you very much. Really do appreciate both of your times. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.